the previous videos, we mentioned about the APA review process. When you submit your manuscript to a journal, the editorial board will send your manuscript to several reviewers who are known to be the expert in the field in order to review your papers, to review the new knowledge, give comment on it, and match judgment call whether to accept or to reject the work. Normally, the entire peer review process is done in the manner of double-blind. That means the reviewer do not know who is the author, and the author do not know who is the reviewer. The editorial board will facilitate this entire process so that it is conducted professionally and without bias. The peer review process can be found in the following places. This include submitting to open literature, that means we are talking about the journals and conference paper. The outcome of the review is to decide whether the article get to be published or not. There is another place where peer review process can occur, which is submitting for the examinations of the thesis, dissertations and the research report. In this case, it is basically referring to the postgraduate students, which at the end of their postgraduate study, they need to submit their thesis and then giving viva presentations to the examiner. The postgraduate students will only know the examiner during the viva presentations. This entire process will be facilitated by the School of Postgraduate Study of the respective institutions. The outcome of the peer review process is whether the students are qualified to acquire the Master's or PhD degree. For this kind of peer review process, it will be very much dependent on the expectations of the reviewer representing the research community in terms of the adequacy of the quality of the research output as well as the quality of the reports. The requirement or emphasis may differ slightly among publishers or reviewers. For example, the detailed mathematical rigor, rigorous experimental evidence and etc. In general, they are looking for the meeting expectations by the research community as well as the novelty, value or impacts of the works. Next, we discuss about how we deal with the criticism from the reviewers. We have mentioned this somewhere in our previous videos, not to take it too personal and take it as a learning process. Now we're going to discuss in more detail how do you respond to the comments from the reviewer. First, you need to know that receiving comments and criticism from the reviewer is very common in the research community. Everyone involved in the research, when they intend to publish something, be it journals, be it conference paper, be it thesis, will receive comments from the reviewers. The comments can be in the forms of suggestions, criticism, inquiry, and others. The ultimate goals of giving the comment, it will be to indicate the lackings or the areas that require improvement so that you can improve your quality of the research output and also for the reviewer to indicate whether he would recommend to accept or to reject your papers or your thesis. Normally, the reviewers are from the field of the study, recognized as the experts who has experience within the research, particularly actively involved with the relevant topic. And those reviewers have their own ethics and will need to conduct the reviewing tasks in the professional manner, giving criticism in the polite way. The journals will 
facilitate the entire process to ensure they are not crossing the boundary. Therefore, as the students or as the author who submit the journals responding to the criticism from the reviewer, you should learn to accept criticism maturely. You need to be patient and you need to aware that the ultimate purpose here is to help you to improve, enhance and make your research papers to be more robust. And then you need to provide a list of response to the reviewer, addressing every single comments, inquiry, as well as criticism given by the reviewer. These are the guidelines for you to formulate the response. You will need to summarize or indicate the modifications that you have done since the last revisions. If possible, you need to refer to specific line number of the revised manuscript. It is so that the reviewer is easier to trace your modification made in responding to their comments. You will need to respond to all the points raised by the reviewers and background information, justifications, evidence may be provided in the case of defending some argument. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with all the comments and criticism given by the reviewer. If you feel they have misunderstood certain things in your research article, you may need to provide clarifications. Or if you disagree with some arguments or prior understanding given by the reviewer, you may need to defend your own argument by providing sufficient justification and evidence trying to persuade the reviewers. We will consider this as a academic communications among the research community. This is quite common and the reviewer will not feel being offended.